right, so today we have for you this nice uh, German-made uh, cylindrical grinder. Um, it's a pretty small, uh, compact uh, size machine uh, with a substantially heavy workhead, tailstock, just the overall pretty heavy. Uh, these uh, machines have the Cincinnati name on them, uh, but they were actually made in Germany. Uh, and uh, so they're really a lot different than a Cincinnati grinder. Really, you don't have anything at all in common. Uh, so we have it running right now, and in a manual mode, you have a rapid in and out with the wheel slide. And at the same time, if you, if you select it, you can have your work head start at the same time. So this is always a fixed movement, and then you can uh, manually um, manually come in and touch off on your workpiece, back your wheel off, set your dial, and then uh, feed down your part by hand if you choose. Or uh, there's also an automatic plunge cycle. Um, but at this point, you could use this machine by hand. You have two ratios with the hand wheel. You have the course, which is what I'm doing now. And there's one that's a little finer. The infeed itself, the infeed hand wheel has a fine feed dial so that you can feed this in very uh, a little increments at each time. You also have a swivel adjustment under the work head. The work head is alive and dead. Right now we have the spindle locked and we're just driving this outer drum uh, as if you had a, two, a little piece there between centers and held up by the tail stock. So you rotate it with this uh, driver. Anyway, it's also swivels. You loosen this up and this can swivel. And you have a variable speed uh, built in. So as I crank this down, I can go slower. And the other way, it goes up to almost 500 RPM. Okay, so grinding wheel head. This upper slide is on a dovetail right over here. I don't know if you can see that. But it has a, a coarse adjustment. This upper part here, this is the wheel spindle. These little windows here, when you first start the machine, you should notice oil uh, circulating in there, just a small stream, a little, but you want to see it. Um, and this upper slide, there's a couple of bolts here you loosen, and this can be pushed and pulled uh, back and forth for a coarse adjustment, and then you lock it down and you leave it there. Uh, it also has a swivel. Uh, it can be rotated, it can be swiveled uh, a certain amount of degrees, I'm not exactly sure how much. It does not go completely around or 90 degrees, it's just a 7 or 8 degrees, I'm not sure, it's probably on our quotation. Of course the table swivels for taking out your taper. You have tail stock. Uh, I believe both of these have a Morse taper number 2 uh, for the center. So what you want to know about this is when you're going to use this machine by hand and use the, the automatic plunge, um, there is a dead stop here and this clockwise is what brings the slide to you. But with clockwise, if you have the stop on, there is going to come a point where you're going to hit a zero right there. So you're up against a solid stop. This whole thing can be rotated by loosening this knob in the center. This is just an eccentric. You're only clamping down a little eccentric pin in there. You don't want to, if you turn this fully around, it's ruined. Uh, so bear that in mind. When you want to use this, you'll notice that needle goes back up. There's an infeed system uh, mounted below the wheel slide. That, uh, it's a rack and pinion infeed. You're not going to see the hand wheel actually move. So you want to figure out, uh, you want to grind apart by hand to zero and stay up against this solid stop. And you want to set the total amount of infeed. This is, has a fixed amount of, of automatic plunge. So when we first start this up, you'll see this needle is feeding down now and nothing's moving here. That's because it has nothing really to do with this. So right 
now the infeed mechanism, which is inside the machine, has, has gone up against its solid stop. That's where it wants you to be when you start feeding in on your part. You have to wait until this feeds all the way down to zero, and now you can start working with this. Now you have control of this wheel in and out right here. It's all the way in against your solid stop. You don't want it to be in the back position, and you start, you start trying to grind your got to take the stop off. You start trying to grind your workpiece because you just have to give it enough time for that to get down because if you start to go into your part now, this is still feeding in. You have to allow this to go to zero before you start using this manually. When that goes to zero, the slide is going to be all the way forward. There's actually a, rack, a whole mechanism underneath here which is turning a very fine system of gears and a rack and pinion that is moving this slide slowly in and out. Um, <clears throat> so, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, so now uh, you want to be aware of that. You want this to always... Now the feed rates for this are right here. There's one that's for the fine feed and there's one for the coarse feed. But right now this is in manual. It's going to just be in the one feed, uh, your coarse feed. Okay, in manual or setup mode, there's selector switches here for using an in-process gauge or for using the spark out timer or just manual where it's going to come down and nothing's going to happen. You're not going to get any lights coming on. Now you can, you can actually make a part. You can make the part the size you want. You get your taper out. You do whatever you have to do <clears throat> and then give yourself enough uh, a, a stock allowance so that when you send this back, and now put this in the automatic mode and come in. At some point here you're supposed to start touching your part if you've got the hand wheel set right. Now it switches from a coarse feed rate to a fine feed rate. The needle, the feed is still moving in but at a much slower rate. Now you've reached the zero. There's a spark out time, there's a timer mounted on the electrical cabinet that you set for how many minutes or seconds, and then it kicks back. It stops the work head, it sends the wheel head back, and it sends that back. It retracts your infeed. Again, this is really supposed to be up against the dead stop. All right, and then before all this, you use the hand wheel with this up against zero to touch your workpiece, lock it down, and just leave enough. You have to grind a few pieces to get it right, all right? So again, it's all the way back. We start the cycle, the work head <clears throat> comes on, the wheel slide moves in, and this starts coming down. Now the numbers up there don't mean anything. They're just, it's just an indicator. It's not tenths or thousandths. Uh, so don't get fooled by that. If your parts are still a little too big, you make a fine adjustment here. Or too small. You make a fine, you get it until they're all working right. This is if you're doing part, the same parts over and over. And you just go. Now I don't know exactly how much the stock removal there is from here to here if it's only three thousandths or four thousandths but you could change that you can have this needle go all the way down to ten there's an adjustment on the side of the machine right here that you you put your allen wrench in and when this thing backs up you'll actually see the needle keep going back as you loosen the screw here all right so that's plunge grinding now when you want to do traverse grinding, which this can do too, you have to shut that automatic cycle off. So you have to put that in the center. And then you're going to be wanting to have uh, tables going back and forth. So you got to turn on a table. Let's see what we can do here. Bring this in. And <clears throat> why isn't that going? There we go. We start the table.
Now again, when, you, when you're using this, right now if you had a part in here and you were trying to get the, the taper out of it or whatever, you, again, you have to let this first go down to zero. And now you have this hand wheel that you have to, uh, again, work, touch off your part and then, fish, then <clears throat> with this you actually do back off your hand wheel and you have a feed when you can turn on here and now you get a feed at each reversal when you go when you're grinding between centers like this, traverse grinding, you're not using this anymore. But this has to be forward against the solid stop for your accuracy. If it's not, you won't have any, you'll be all over the place. Has to be forward. This has to be off. You got to be in just a, and, and now you're working with a ratchet and pull kind of an infeed. It's a different, it's a different infeed. It's only for this uh, traverse grinding. And they have two selector switches here. You can shut one side or the other off. I have both sides on right now. So this is just going to keep clicking down until it comes to your dead stop. And again, you can set this dial so that you're only taking off two thousandths or whatever it is you need to take off your workpiece. And when you hit the button, it goes, it backs up. Now this doesn't because it's not automatic. So you have to back this, you know, away from your part. and shut your table off. So it's really a pretty cool machine. I know I kind of went on there, but they are complicated. Uh, I know them pretty well. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to use this video in the future for some assistance. Uh, I think I covered everything. Uh, you know, they got a, if you turn these uh, one switch on here, you can make it so that when you hit this button, the table comes on in, with the one button. That's when you're all set up and ready to go. You can have everything happen at once. But again, that has to work its way down to zero. And it would if you were grinding apart now and you shut the machine off uh, or sent it back like that. Each time you have to be aware of that. Now that's fed all the way forward. And now you can touch your part that you're grinding there. And then you can start your feed. But each time you send that head back, that piston on the side of the machine is going to be going back and forth with it. All right, thank you.